from me that I have to do the surgery and uh, I have to do it now. <laughs> Oh my god i know i promised you guys that i'll be giving you unlimited content but my health has not been in the best of shape it hasn't been my best friend since i did my last video which was in november but here i am feeling much better and i'm about to give you guys some update of what's about to take place in my life stay tuned because trust me you'll be moved by this um Thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't already, y'all know what to do. Please go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and like, and go ahead and comment. Turn on your post notifications. So I'm gonna give y'all five seconds to do that. I'll wait. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, oh God, Tata's coming out. But yes, guys, so story time, right? Let's get into this. All right, so I had to grow some real balls to even talk about this in public. Um, I've thought about it multiple times. Do I really want to put this out there? Or, you know, I don't want anyone to judge me. And I'm scared, to be honest. I look tough on the outside, but on the inside, I'm a wuss. And, and that's just the plain truth so details right i'll be doing surgery yes in exactly 20 days from today well 19 right because it's on the 27th so on the 27th of january i'll be doing surgery am i excited I don't know if I should be excited. Stick around to know why I'm doing surgery. So for those who know me know that I have a beautiful princess in my life. My daughter is seven years old. And for those who don't know me, I have a seven year old princess. She just turned seven this December. So she's she thinks she's a woman now, but y'all know how girls are. I had my daughter December, 2012. So she was a Christmas baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best day of my life um my life changed for the better for the best can i say that that day um anyways fast forward after i had my daughter you know for all the mothers out there after you have your child you have to go in for your six weeks um checkup so when i went in for my i went back to jamaica i went in for my checkup my guy at the time told me unfortunately i have fibroids um on the good side they're seedlings so at the time she told me there's nothing to worry about now before i had my daughter i have always have hormonal issues so i mean they just you know warn me about those things they put me on birth control and the whole works after you have a baby now because i think fibroids is normal it's in my family um i didn't think anything of it and for those of y'all who know me my mom is a warrior and unfortunately she did her she did a um hysterectomy so let's fast forward to when i joined the military now i joined the military in 2016 and you know during my time serving I realized I was just not feeling well I wasn't feeling like myself and um, I went to the doctor and they told me the fibroids are growing now here I am in the military and my fibroids are growing I don't have a second child so my first instinct was okay i need to well when i explained it to my mom because my mom and i were really close when i explained it to my mom she said okay you need to have a child right now so you can go ahead and do the surgery Waiting. can't get pregnant can't get pregnant can't get pregnant i'm trying to do this video and i'm trying not to get emotional so bear with me guys please um 
so yeah I went to the they put me immediately on to the infertility clinic um, in the military and I was going there for a while no one knew about that um, I did a lot of procedures there I did a lot of ultrasound they wanted to see where the fibroids were I did the dye test where they insert some dye and they see if your fallopian tubes are blocked and the whole works the whole shebang now before I go any further I'm just giving you guys my experience what I've been through up until this time by no means am I giving anyone any advice or any suggestion nothing at all I'm just sharing my experience with you guys so anyways um i went to the infertility clinic and they released some information to me they gave me the size of the fibroids where they're located and the damage that they're doing to my body so when i found out the damage that the fibroids um was doing to my body uh i did a, i made a lot of changes uh i was still in the military so working out wasn't an option i had to do it uh still couldn't do a lot because i was bleeding but i did what i could last well not last year because now we're in 2020 but november 2018 i stopped eating meat and my stepmom advised me that you know sometimes it's the hormones that they put in the meat here especially in the chicken you know has a lot to do with how rapidly the fibroids are growing and then i realized that actually my fibroids are growing pretty quickly and when i did more research on eating certain things i realized that it do it does have an effect on how rapidly the fibroids grow so i stopped eating all sorts of meat i only eat seafood right now and veggies and I started exercising a lot. I started doing a lot of crunches, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of squats, just everything to keep my body, you know, active. Or I just didn't, I was just scared, to be honest with you. And I didn't want one day, I, I, I did not wake up. So I did a lot of things to keep my body in an active shape. And I actually look good. Um, I lost a lot of weight. And I felt good in myself, but I know I was still battling with this craziness inside of me. A lot of times people would reach out to me and they would be like, Hey, you, you, you need to have another baby or your daughter is now at a time six. You need to have another baby. And you know, I would just shrug it off. I would just smile. But it's something that I go through every day. Um, I've seen my friends having kids and I know that I can't right now so it's not easy it's not easy going through that especially at this tender age because i think i'm still young especially at this tender age it's not easy i've looked into many options ivf a lot of it but why spend so much money doing that when i still have these demons inside of me because that's what i call them demons now some people may be wondering what are fibroids now fibroids are non-cancerous tumors they're benign something something google it um but they're in mostly found in black females and unfortunately you know we have to go through the struggles of dealing with the symptoms of having fibroids some of the symptoms i faced um with these fibroids are nausea uh lightheadedness vomiting cramps now when I started feeling the cramps, I real I wondered if I had endometriosis. Did I say that correctly? I think so. No, when I went to the doctor, they said, no, I don't have that because um, they did the test. They even um, they did some MRIs on the uterus and they didn't find that. It's just the fibroids. No, I was wondering like if it's just the fibroids and it's it was one centimeter at the time so you know that's really small why is it affecting me so much where the fibroids are located in the uterus um it's blocking where the baby should be so say for instance 
this is a like the top part of the uterus right here right listen i'm no doctor i'm just showing you what i see from the ultrasound and the mri now i have a fibroid that is pushing right here so it's like this it's shaped like this so it makes it very distorted and that's where i get my cramps from growing up i've always had really bad periods so with the heavy bleeding i didn't you know really look into it to say it was anything special but after i got out of the military i realized that my health was going downward and I was like, okay, this is it. I'm taking control of my life because the infertility clinic could not do anything at the time because I was getting out of the military. So they could not continue with any procedures or surgery at the time. Um, I got so sick. I was always in pain, always moody, just sleeping always tired i could not do anything and it was just really bad so i decided to go see my doctor when i went to see my doctor he set me up with a guy now because of course now if you've been in the military you got all you know it's a whole procedure so they sent me my medical doctor set me up with my gyno and now i've been going to see seeing the gyno now, when I went to see the gyno, she pulled all my records and realized like these fibroids, they need to go. The recommendation from the infertility clinic is that these fibroids have to go. My gyno said, okay, she, have to, she has to redo the test. That's the dye test. So I did that. And then she has to redo, she had to redo uh, an MRI to see the growth over a period of time. I did the MRI in October of last year and the fibroids are growing. Now they're at three centimeters, one is at five centimeter. I really did not want to do the surgery because I had my daughter via C-section and I didn't want to reopen my cut just in case I get pregnant again, I'm going to have to reopen it. What if I want to have three kids? I think they say you can open your C-section. They informed so me that times. I have to do the surgery and uh, I have to do it now so um so i found that out in october and they sent me to do some blood work now when they sent me to do the blood work and um i did it they took like i'm not exaggerating i think they took like 10 tubes of blood they were testing for everything kidneys this that like everything so they took about 10 tubes of blood 10 11 tubes of blood when i got home i remember specifically the day when i got home the evening my doctor called me now this is my pcm called me and he said um mrs madison rose i have some news for you no bear in mind i just took my blood test today and here am i on the phone with my doctor saying i have some news for you and not saying oh your blood test came back normal i was going for my daughter the day this was at like 2 30 in the e in the afternoon and i was going for my daughter and my feet got so weak so i had to pick up my daughter by 2 45 and i got so weak I sat down on my bed and I was like, okay, I'm listening. He said, if I'm tired, if I'm constantly tired. So I said, to be honest, I don't even know because I've been through a lot of depression while getting out of the military. I don't even know if I'm tired or I'm depressed. Um, he said, if I've ever um, passed out, so I said, no. He said, if I'm wanting to eat um, powder, no, I was like, do I lie or do I tell the truth? There was the doctor, so let me tell the truth. Just in case I'm doing something wrong. No, stick a pin. For the past, I, last year, I think about May to when I did my blood test, I ate. If my mom is going to watch this and she's going to be so mad at me. I ate a bottle of powder. 
yes I would take the almonds powder and I would put it in my hand and I would just eat it like every time I see the bottle I would eat it I would pass I would be sitting down watching TV and my body wants the powder I would tell my husband to go hide it and I would find it and I would just be eating powder eating it eating it eating I would be sleeping and I get up and I want to eat powder um, it was so bad during the summer when it was really hot I would just be eating the powder and drinking water please don't judge me but anyways when the doctor called me um, you know he asked all these questions and then I answered and then I said can you just get to the point what is happening so he said um, my iron level is low it's beyond normal it's now past the stage of anemia because I've always been anemic I've been anemic before I had my daughter and that I know but it's now past that stage I need a blood transfusion immediately so he said I should go to the emergency room right away now my first instinct is blood transfusion like what is that I know what it is but I, my, my, my brain was so confused that I, I listen I, I could not remember anything I had to calm myself down and I said okay first thing first before I even think of going to the emergency room let me go get my daughter from school because of course I can't be late to get her I called my mom immediately and I told her what the doctor said and if y'all know a Jamaican mother she was like no 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 blood transfusion no blood transfusion go on to the store no go on to the store no go get beetroot go get carrot juice and all of that no I had to call back my doctor and tell him I want to try some home remedy first before going to the emergency room to receive blood now this is me telling a doctor declining care I'm now telling a doctor that listen I'm not gonna take a blood transfusion so now I'm risking my life I'm like okay do I take the blood transfusion or do I die he gave me the option now my mom is a praying mom and she has so much faith in me and um She told me exactly what to do. Oh God. Yeah, she told me exactly what to do. So, um, my husband got the beets and he got the carrot juice. And um, the doctor told me that for that, it was a Friday. The doctor told me that for that specific week I should not move I should not move get out of the bed um I shouldn't drive I was not allowed to drive and a lot of things now I'm listening to him but I'm a mom I still have my daughter to take care of so that weekend um I just stayed in bed drank carrot juice beetroot just drinking it drinking it drinking it drinking it now when I drink beet when I eat beets I get I, I feel nauseous I feel sick so I couldn't take too much of that and um, my doctor recommend um, he gave me some iron tablets when I went in the prior week but no he's double he's tripling my iron intake so now he's telling me that I should take three iron tablets it's called ferrosol I have it somewhere there um, three iron tablets per day and he's putting me on the IV clinic where I have to go in and um, get iron every week, every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, starting from the following week, every Wednesday, I would go to the IV clinic and get my hand, my vein stuck, and they would insert um, IV iron into my bloodstream. That was how bad it was. No. I really don't understand the medical terms when it comes on to that 
but his blood count should be at a 32 i don't know 32 what but that's a figure that he gave me and mine was at an eight and eight so it was really bad like i was on death road now i had my i have my business going i have other obligations so i didn't let my complications you know take me over it was hard and in my head um i'm kind of somewhat sorta ish a public figure because of my business you know i'm always talking to people i'm always out there doing some form of video so i had to put the best outside and i could not walk around showing my daughter that i'm constantly crying or popping pills and you know the whole works so i went to the iv clinic from for six weeks october into november and um i had to be taking painkillers um naproxen because ibuprofen does nothing for me anymore so i had to be taking naproxen because i'm constantly cramping uh they wanted to stop the bleeding i think i forgot to say that so i was con i was bleeding non-stop and i'm already anemic so that's just the enemy right there right so my gyno told me that she has to give me a shot that is called grass gasorelin gasorelin something like that no the needle i don't want to exaggerate the needle is as huge as the, the the thing in a pen that's how big the needle is and if my belly wasn't so big i would show you guys the scar that it left but i don't want to show that as i don't want to show that like I'm gonna wait until my belly look cute flat and cute but anyways i went in for that shot during the time that i was getting my iv my iron iv and it's where they put freezing spray on the side of my stomach right here and they insert a pellet under my skin now what that shot was supposed to do was to stop me from bleeding so that i have enough blood because now we're talking about surgery unfortunately the shot only made the bleeding worse the pellet is already under my skin and what that shot does it puts you in menopause it puts you in medical menopause so at age 29 since October 2019 I've been going through medical menopause can't believe I'm putting this out there yes so everything that a 40 something to 50 something woman goes through I am going through it so i'm going through the hot flashes i am going through right now it's so hot like even having this light on me but i'm doing this video and i'm gonna finish it up so i can i just want to share my story because i know this is gonna help someone so i'm going through the hot flashes i'm going through moodiness i was i'm i'm a naturally miserable person so just imagine i'm like triple triple miserable <laughs> um sometimes i'm nauseous i'm tired i'm just not in the mood to do anything but i have to push you know i have my business to run um i had the black friday sale coming up like i had to push i had to do what i had to do so anyways i took the shot i contact i contacted my doctor and i told her that i'm still bleeding and i'm bleeding even worse she said, oh, you know, it's gonna stop, blah, blah, blah. It's just my body reacting to it. No, this is a month, which is in November. Now we're in November. So in a month time, I'm still bleeding. So I went in and I'm like, listen, what can I do? Because if I'm supposed to have surgery, there's no way that I should be bleeding like this. She gave me some progesterone pills because she's saying um no 
maybe my body react the pill the shots had too much of a reaction on my body so now i lost all my hormones so now they're giving me back some hormonal pills to see if they can balance whatever is happening to me lord jesus still bleeding I said, and I will keep on saying it. I have to do what I have to do to make to ensure my family eats. I have my business. I have stuff. I'm going to school. I have so much things doing. I'm a mom. Like, oh my God, it's so much to be doing going through this. I do pillow talk every Friday night going through this. But I have to put the best out there, you know? so anyways and i'm not the type of person to be like oh i'm sick i'm sick i'm not that type of person like i'll push through like listen i'm a soldier okay <laughs> but in all reality um now we've decided to do surgery because i have to get these demons outside of my body like i have to get them outside of my body they have to come out of my uterus i need them out i need them gone so my surgery is january 27th and um i'm gonna be removing my fibroids now the doctor i think i said it the doctor wanted to do a um, i don't know what it's called i don't remember the name the where they do the bikini cup but because i already have my c-section she's gonna do a laparoscopy did i say that right i hope i said that correctly now a laparoscopy is where they put about she's putting about five incisions in my upper abdomen and then she's going with going in with a robot which is a camera and then she's gonna be she's gonna take out the fibroids listen i don't know the medical terms i'm giving you the layman terms because that's what i understand all right i'm not even gonna try and complicate it so she be making like about some incisions about this like can you see like this wide she'll be going in with the robot and then she'll be taking out the fibroids now for those of y'all who follow me and when it was summer 2019 i thought i was a hot girl so i got a dermal in my stomach now when i went in for my mri they said I had to remove the dermal. Now, if, if y'all know what a dermal is, it's a piercing. The top is on the skin, but the bottom is inside the surface of the skin. So, the dude told me at the MRI place that um, he cannot do the MRI if the germ is not real. So, I said, oh, he said he can do a test. So, he sent me into the machine. Long story short, he sent me into the machine. The machine did not alarm. So, that means my jewelry is real and i told him that my jewelry was real but who am i to say to uh whatever person that does mri that hey my jewelry is real so anyways he did the mri with my jewelry in so i have a dermal above my navel and i my navel is pierced as well um so i told my my guy of course she knows that and i reminded her of that so she said i should get it removed because the robot that she's inserting or the camera that she's putting out gives heat waves and she doesn't want the jewelry shit to be heat and then catch me a fire so now i have to go find my piercer to remove my dermal when she looked at it yesterday she realized that um the dermal is in the same spot that she's gonna cut so you know what i did i was like listen I'm going to use one stone and kill two birds. Because I'm going to be asleep, use your knife and cut the dermal out of my skin. Because I'm not about to be in any more pain. So that's basically it, guys. I'll be doing surgery January 27th. I'll be doing a laparoscopy. And I'm just ready to get these things out of my body. I've been through so much. I've, I'm always in pain. I'm always sick like there's never a day that i'm not sick yesterday while i was at the hospital um i did another blood work and let me tell you whatever being you believe in i believe in god right and god works miracles god moves mountain when i did my blood work yesterday and 
it may sound like I'm talking, I'm going all around, around, around. I'm just trying to remember everything to push everything in. Like, uh, when I went to do my blood work yesterday, um, they took another 10 tubes of blood. I had to do another type of test where they're testing to see what blood type am I, just in case I'm in the surgery and I need blood. My, my guy now asked me, are you willing to take a blood transfusion or not so i told her with if if it's a case where the blood transfusion will save my life because i have to live for my daughter then i'll take it that's the risk that i have to take i rather take the blood the blood versus dying so anyways i did my blood work yesterday and when i got home after a long day an entire day at the hospital when i got home I got a call from my gyno at 4.35 p.m. Yes, I'm exact. I got a call from her and she said that she has great news. My blood count moved from an eight to a 39. From an eight to a 39. As I said before, the normal blood counts should be around at a, is it 36 or 32? One of those numbers. But whatever the case is, I'm at a 39. My doctor was shocked. No, when I said earlier, my mom is a praying mom and my mom told me exactly what to do because not saying the iron tablet alone won't work, but these home remedy that my mom sits with me on the phone and ensure that i take whatever she she told me to take works it works for me so i'm all set for surgery um my blood count is there it's ready i'm i'm nervous don't get me wrong i'm nervous i'm getting into the mode of not being nervous I know everything will be okay. I have supportive friends. I have support. No, I'm family. on the road to recover. I'm on the road to being myself again because along the way with this, I lost myself. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to get up out of bed. I didn't want to take care of myself. I, it was just a lot. But here I am. I'm doing surgery on the 27th and I just ask you guys to pray for me. I will try to update you guys as much as I can. I did ask my gyno if she can take photos of whatever came, whatever she's going to take out. She's not promising me, but she will try to ask the pathologist to take some photos so that I have some photos to at least show my daughter. A long paper that she gave me of the, 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 the things that might, the possibilities. And I'm just praying that, you know, I have, I don't have to go through any of that. Um, she told me that I have a football field going in, in, going on inside my body. Well, over here, a soccer field going on inside of my body. So I have a lot. So I'm so anxious. I'm ready to be done with them. They have put me through hell and back. I'm always back pain, this pain, that pain. Every day, the sick and all of that. So I'm done. My journey with fibroids will be over January 27th. No, I know sometimes if you it's a possibility if you don't do a hysterectomy that's where you take out everything your uterus and all the fibroids will grow back but listen I'm 29 I'm not about to do that I want them out right now like if they grow back a few years from now whatever the case is but for right now I need them out I need to live my life I need to be happy I'm 30 this year and listen, I'm gonna have a no fibroids party when these are out of me, okay? But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm not gonna keep you guys here any longer. Thank you so much for the support. And reach out to me. Don't be afraid to reach out to me. My IG handle is madam. If you guys have any questions for me, um, I hope this video helps somebody. I hope it's you know reaches somewhere and just never give up there is hope there is hope at the end of the tunnel there is light there i pray a lot and last year i kind of got backwards in church in church and now i'm finding my faith again and i'm telling you i've felt different 
and I'm not here to preach to anybody that you know you should go to church you could you should praise God but what works for me works for me and I can only talk for myself so with that being said I'm leaving you guys now thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment share whatever you want to do thank you guys so much bye